between the rise of the Kimrog Empire and the tumultuous Demon Wars, there was an enigmatic era. A time when brave souls traversed oceans and continents in search of glory, riches, and power. Let us tell you of the days of high adventure. Hello and welcome to High Adventure. Today we embark on an exciting chapter in this ongoing campaign. The brothers discovered signs of life off of this uncharted island, having met up with um, a group of fishermen who were of a different race uh, and, and then having also finished exploring the underwater caverns. The brothers have had the council with Captain Fu and the rest of the survivors on the island. And the vast majority of the survivors have decided to align with the plans of the brothers and have now gathered what few possessions they need and any possessions uh, of value, but not so much as to weight themselves down. And as the morning comes, uh, everyone being rested, um, you find that your mother is, um, is folding one of the gowns that you guys had recovered from those crates. Um, and she's folding it up and it's, you know, one of the gowns that looks like from some other culture. And she smiles at you and she, she looks at you and she says, I, I don't think there is anything of additional value that I would bring, but I thought perhaps it would be nice to have something else to wear. It will suit you, mother. Yes. And you see Captain Fu, um, not really so much, you know, packing up anything as he is trying to help others organize. Um, and you see he's also talking to uh, a group of um, six of the sailors and these sailors don't look like they're packing up anything at all but they're they look like they're in some kind of negotiation with captain Fu. um and as you guys are kind of looking at this um your friend jiao chen uh comes over to you and you see that all he has slung around each of his shoulders is uh a corked um kind of like a gourd it looks like one of the the containers, um, like a wooden canteen, essentially that that um, you guys were able to recover from some of those supplies, and and he says uh, he says it would appear that those those men have decided to stay. Uh, Captain Fu is uh, speaking with them of their plans, and uh, he is, sees no reason as to why they couldn't stay or continue utilizing the camp that we have built here. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Captain Fu is giving them some instructions in terms of uh, survival techniques and also uh, defense of this camp uh, from any possible pirates or other travelers who would seek to take what they have built so far. And Zhao Chen looks over uh, at, at you guys and he says uh, as for myself uh, I I have uh, merely a a humble uh, allotment of some of the fruit wine that I had just uh, fermented and and you you see he unslings one of the two canteens and he hands it to your oldest brother Shao Zen wonderful wonderful thank you my friend he says, uh, hope, hopefully, uh, wherever it is that these fishermen are taking us, we can find some work and some place to live. I'm sure we'll find many things. Uh, but I worry for the remaining settlers. I know that this island has attracted pirates and things of, the, of that nature. 
and I worry that they alone will not be able to defend themselves. Hmm. Perhaps that is what Captain Fu speaks with them about now. Hmm. I do not know. And he, he does a short bow, and you see he walks over to another group of people who are kind of packing things up. Um, a few moments later, Captain Fu comes over to you guys, and you see he 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 has kind of exasperated look on his face, and he says, I have tried to encourage those men to come with us, uh, but they are set on claiming this, this island and trying to continue to build from here uh, with the tools and weapons and supplies that that you brothers were able to gather it is possible that they could hold their own here and continue to cultivate and construct a settlement. Who knows, perhaps in time, when a ship becomes available, we will find our way back here. But I think that most of the people have gathered what few items they wished to bring and we are ready to follow your lead to the northern point on the island and await these these fishermen. Yes, they should be here about midday. Hmm. Let us go. So you guys see that the you know the remaining people, um, including your mother and and Zhao Chen and Captain Fu, have kind of all gathered and they follow you up the coast. And as you guys lead the way, um, this route has become familiar to you, especially in your numerous expeditions around the island, exploring it. Um, and you, you make your way along the coast and up to the northeastern edge. Uh, and you, you kind of stand along this rocky outcropping where you had initially spotted the fishermen's boats. Um, and, and the group kind of gathers around and a few people sort of like settle down and sort of sit underneath some of the trees and just kind of, you know, wait in the shade. Um, there is a nice, you know, breeze blowing in, um, but it's, it's, it's a warm day, just as all the other days have been so far. How many people are with us, including the brothers and mother? There are eight Eight total? I think so. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I will uh, ask everybody to, to gather around me for just a little bit. I want to I want to give us a little bit of insurance in case something happens. And I will ritually cast water reading and give us all water reading for 24 hours. Oh, fantastic. Ooh. All right. I feel a tingle, brother. You know what it is, and I'll, and I'll explain to the others. The next day, until this time, tomorrow, you will be able to breathe water just in case anything happens. Okay. Um, you you wait um, for several hours. Is there anything that you guys want to do during that time? Um, just make sure mother's comfortable. Yes, she, she seems to be comfortable. Um, you notice that she, she kind of every once in a while, maybe just out of boredom, she'll, she'll kind of get up from the tree under which she was sitting and kind of walk out towards the, the rocky coast by you guys and kind of look out there, you know, kind of shading her eyes yeah. from the sun and, uh, and then she'll smile and kind of walk back to the shade. I'll cast... Uh... Druid craft just to see what the weather's going to do. But so you you do, and the weather seems to be very even. Um, yeah, for the next twenty four hours, a sunny day, mild, you know, winds, um, no rain, no turbulence. Perfect. Shall we go swimming while we have this gift, brother has given us? <laughs> Up to you. Is there a pool, something nearby where we can do a little swimming? Um, there, there is. Yeah, I mean, you you can you can walk 
about you know a hundred yards away from this point, and there it kind of comes down into a rocky beach, um, you know where you can you can get in pretty easily, and it's it's sh relatively shallow for a ways out. I'll go to a spot that's just over my head, so I can breathe underwater and practice my martial arts. Okay. You do. Do some training underwater. You do. Um, I, Shao Zen, do I see but, anything exciting under there? <laughs> no, not really. Just fish, you know, uh, the occasional little crab. Nothing, <laughs> nothing exceptional. Um, Shao Zen, what do, uh, what do you do during this time? Uh, I think I want to go and hang out with, uh, Zhao Chan. Okay. And, uh, I'd, I'd like to really offer him, uh, perhaps if we, get to our destination, our final destination, uh, offer him a job. So I want to talk to him and, and see if that's something that he might. You, you kind of bring this up and he says, uh, I uh, have, have for the most years of my life, I've been a seafaring man, uh, but I am older and perhaps after surviving this this shipwreck, perhaps this is a sign from the Celestials that I should retire. Uh, it would be something that I would be very wise to consider uh, your offer. And you have my gratitude. I suppose that uh, it is certainly not the worst way to, to retire, to, to have a job and some stability uh, with a, a noble family such as yours. And he nods. Um, I bring out that gourd that he gave me, and I, we need to cheers for this. Camilla. Ah, yes. And he gets his out, and you guys kind of clink your, your wooden jugs, and you, you take a sip, and it's it's very, it's it's kind of a sour citrus hit but you you taste the alcohol right away uh and it's it's refreshing as you sit on this rocky shore with the breeze blowing by and the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks several hours go by and it is about midday now um and Cade you see probably a good couple miles out you see what looks like three sails, three ships, and they're not big. They look like about the same size as the fisherman's boat, but you see them a, a few miles out. Everyone, I think our ride has come, and I pointed it out. Okay. Um, you see people kind of get up and they're, they're looking out. They seem to be pretty excited. Um, could I, um, sorry, could I, could I go to Captain Fu really quick and then have a conversation before we, uh, sure. Like right down to the shoreline or however we're going to do this. Sure. And what I'd like to bring up to him is, uh, that I would like to have the party split if we don't all fit on the boats, um, to where we have a contingency plan. Those that can defend, uh, and there's people that, that can't really fight, maybe have those parties split in two, just to give us a chance if something were to happen. We don't know who these people are uh, and what their uh, you know, good intentions are not. So it would make sense that not put all the weak people on one ship and then all the hardy people on the other. And if we kind of split it, I think it would give us a better chance if we need to commandeer a ship for ourselves you know, if that comes down to it, so. Yep, Captain Fu nods. He says, yes, we we should use discretion in this matter. And I would say your idea of perhaps balancing out our resources would also be wise. I feel it would be most appropriate as the eldest son. That you should make sure you are on the same ship as your mother. It is your duty to ensure this. I 
I would be on a different ship, to be certain. Um, and your brothers, as long as we are balanced out, I think your plan is wise. And he nods and he, you see he goes over to a few of the other sailors and begins like kind of explaining your plan. Um, the ships are sailing. They, it looks like to you guys, like they're gradually coming towards where you are. As they get closer, can we see if they're still the same type of vessels, like the fishing vessels that we saw the other day? Um, you can see that the sails are that kind of off white, you know, dirty white. Um, they don't seem to be marked and they seem to be the, the same size. Mm -hmm. Are you guys all still on the, on the land, on the coast? Yeah. I'm standing out in plain view so they can, if they got like, you know, a spyglass, they can see me hopefully the rest of this. Okay. Do we swim out or do we have a raft and perhaps that we can use and some of us in the water doggy paddle all the way up and push the rest up or because we have equipment, we have things. How do we? How close to shore? Because we didn't bring that along with us. Well, it it looks like you would have to do something to get out to the boats because, like, the closest they could get to where you are mm -hmm. would probably be about twenty feet away from sure. the shore. Like this is like where you were at. The rocky outcropping kind of yeah. drops off deep pretty quickly it's not like a beach right. right so you know you guys would have to figure out something for that now you do remember you do have two um rowboats yeah. and yeah. Two rafts back at your camp but that's quite a ways away yeah hopefully maybe they have their own little robots they can ferry us if so not, We'll is there any palm trees that we can maybe knock down really quick or something oh, yeah. like that we could use as a floater? Maybe we should just chop down a couple of pieces and string something where we could just make a makeshift raft. Are we still in the section where there's every stuff and some, everybody else can swim? Is there still some uh, driftwood from wreckage near nearby that we can fashion together a floating device? No, most of the good stuff you guys sell took it. already. You yeah. you. Um, as as you are waiting, you see that the the three boats get closer, and they get to about a hundred yards away. So you can see them pretty clearly, mm -hmm. and you see in one of the the boats like someone's waving. It looks like they're waving like a cloth. Um, and they the the boats again slowly kind of sail towards you guys, and they get to about a hundred feet away. And uh, you see them throw anchors overboard. Um, in the lead of the three boats, you see the fishermen that you, that, you know, Cade, that you had, had met. Um, and you, you see him kind of looking out and, and he, he's beckoning for you guys and he, you see him looking out towards you. <clears throat> Looks like uh -huh. they might be as cautious as we are, brothers. Uh, I'm gonna look to Captain Fu and say, "Do you, do you speak? Do you speak Nicene a lot better than us, of course. Um, would you accompany me? To, to better He's like, I, I will swim to the ship with you. Yes. And you uh, see him, <clears throat> you see him set down his his uh, sack that he had kind of gathered some stuff in and um, he dives off the rocks into the water. Yeah. And I, I, I go, go as well. Okay. While they're swimming out to, sh uh, to the ship, I gather everyone around and start to f bring all the supplies together and find ways to haul them out into the water. Yeah. I mean, there really isn't any way to do that and yeah. keep everything dry. Yeah. Unless you guys have a raft or a rowboat. Um, 
So as as you're doing that, um, Kate and Captain Fu arrive at the first boat, and the the men on the first boat um, they recognize you, Kate, and they they help both of you up. They pull you out of the water effectively. Um, they have like a little rope thrown over the the um, the boat. Yeah. Uh, and the the lead man that you had met before. Um, he 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 kind of looks at you and bows a little bit, mm. and Captain Fu says to him in in Nicene, he he says something to him in Nicene, and you see the the man look almost surprised, and and he responds in Nicene, and um, Captain Fu says a few more things, and they kind of go back and forth, and. Um, and Captain Fu turns to you and he says, we will need to get our rowboat to bring people to their, their boats. Okay. Uh, he has expressed that they do not wish to come any closer to this island. They are fearful of it. I'm not sure why he didn't explain, but uh, we should swim back and some of us should run back to, to get our rowboat. Okay. Tell them we'll be we'll get a raft shortly, and I'll dive off right now and just like, hurry up. Okay. So, um, do you do you wild shape? No. Okay. All right. So you you dive off. He explains. He dives off. Um, when when your brother and Captain Fu get back to the rocky shore, Captain Fu explains to you guys that. The, the fishermen will not come any closer than that they are fearful or superstitious about something, um, but that we are going to bring the rowboat so that we can bring people and supplies out to their boat. He goes, but any any man who just wants to swim, leave your things here. He says, we, you know, you can make the swim to their boats leave the things here and then when we come back with the rowboat uh we could bring uh oh. mrs zen uh and all of the other things and anyone else who is not confident in their swimming to the to the boats yeah shall we brothers let's begin so um who's going back to get the rowboat uh, would it be able to? Would we be able to like just run with it on land? Would that be? Is that feasible? Is it that heavy? Yeah, it's heavy. So here, here's the scoop. The fastest way to do this would be is if you ran back, mm -hmm. and then got in the water, and then became a dolphin and towed the yeah, boat. I, I see where that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like that would be yeah. without a doubt the fastest way to get oh, back yeah. with the boat. For sure. For sure. But I don't want to. I don't want to show my hand so early. Um, or conversely, you know, if if people ran back, and like if you and and someone ran back, you turned into a dolphin and towed the boat most of the way, and then yeah. the last little bit, you know, mm -hmm. somebody rode it. Mm -hmm. That would also be a fast way to do it. But trying to carry it over land would would take a long time yes. and and we, just straight up rowing it would also take a long time yeah we we can coordinate it brother and i will row yeah. once we get to a distance where they might see us okay let's do it okay so you guys run back <coughs> um captain Fu starts telling you know some of the sailors to to go and they start swimming out to the boats um and he he instructs them to make sure that they spread out as as was agreed upon with the Shao Zen's plan. Um, you guys haul back to the camp. You get back to the camp, and you see see that the six guys who had remained back at the camp are kind of surprised to see you. And they're like, <laughs> what, what is it? Is everything okay? Everything's fine. We just need to use the boat. Uh, you will return it, though. Yes, we, we need the boat. We, we will use it to ferry our things, and then we will beach it upon the shore at the northern point we can retrieve it later when you desire ah, so be it uh, I'll I'll walk up the land route then to bring it back 
and he goes, you know, walking off. You guys get in the boat. You row a little bit of of the way away from the beach and the camp. Um, shape change. Cade, you you shape change. You you grab the rope uh, and you begin tugging it and uh, show show you're flying in this rowboat. It's like having a motorboat. Like you're it's it's moving. You know you're you're holding on. You're holding on to the oars. Um, you guys make really good time, and you get back about just a couple hundred yards short of the rocky shore. I knock on the boat to let him know we're getting close. Yeah. Um, back. Okay. And then you guys row the rest of the way. Um, you see, as you kind of come up there, um, Captain Fu, you know, is waiting. He, he, you toss him the rope. He, he pulls the boat up to the rocky shore and then begins helping your mom. Xiao Zhen helps your mom get into the boat. Um, you take some of the supplies and then, you know, you row out to the boat, you come back. And after like the third trip, effectively, you, you, you know, have done all that. Um, you make one more return trip and one of the guys who had stayed back from the camp basically gets in the rowboat and he, he Mm -hmm. wishes you luck and he rows you out to the boat and drops you off. And then he starts rowing back to the camp. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's now I'm going to say that all that took like a couple hours. Yeah. So it's it's you know, sort of about three o'clock, and um, Captain Fu tells you that the the fishermen are eager to move on, and he says that they they would like to return to their island, which is uh, about five miles away, but that their settlement is a village that's on the other side of the island. So they, yeah. they set sail, they pull up their anchors, they set sail and, and begin going quickly. Um, you notice that while you're on the boats, and each of you are spread out, that all, all of these fishermen, first of all, are all, they all have the same kind of complexion and build. Um, they all seem to be of that other race that Captain Fu had explained as uh, a rocky. And the Iraqi men are all like working diligently to to get the wind and work the rudders. And and the ones who aren't actively working the sails or the rudders, you notice that all of them have harpoons and they're all looking overboard in all directions. Like port side starboard, they're looking as if like for some kind of potential danger or a threat. Um, make an, an eye out too. Make an insight. Check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All this natural twenty for a like twenty-seven, I think. <clears throat> yeah, twenty-seven, uh, 17 for me. Okay. So. You notice that as they're doing this with the harpoons and they're looking vigilant, uh, vigilantly, they're, they're not looking out across the water. Like you would think for like ships, they're, they're looking down. Right. Attack like from the sea. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they, they are very, they're kind of like constantly on alert. Yeah. Um, you sail and you're you're making pretty good time and as you are sailing you see up ahead um an island you see land um and you're you're kind of excited because you see like not just land but like this land has like hills and you see some some kind of mountains very verdant kind of like green uh mountains and and as you're sailing towards this island the boats kind of, when they get within a couple hundred yards, they veer to the east and they begin sailing around the coast of the island. And, you know, after a while, the mountains kind of disappear from sight, but then you see like forests. Um, and it, it, they continue kind of sailing up the, you know, the, the coast of this island and they go north. And you, you sail for a few more miles. And then you see um, 
buildings. You see a windmill and you see buildings, wooden buildings, like a, an actual village, and you see docks. And Captain Fu, you see him like, I, you guys are all split up, so I'm just going to say randomly that like he's on the same boat as um, Shao Zhen and, and your mother. You see Captain Fu, like, upon sight of the land and, and the port, Captain Fu falls to his knees on the boat and begins, like, praying and giving thanks in, in Sakurin to the Celestials for their guidance and their blessings. And um, you see the men on the, on, the, on the boat, like, some of them are just, like, overwhelmed with emotion. And this, this is not a big city. What you guys see as you're coming towards it is you know what looks like maybe a a port town that you know maybe one of the docks the longest dock looks like it could you know harbor a a larger ship but most of the, the boats that you see along the docks look much like the fishing boats that you guys are currently in um as you guys pull into um, this port town. Um, the captain of the the initial one that you you met, um, the captain of this ship, he he explains to Captain Fu, who translates to you guys, that this is the town of Tizi. And the mm -hmm. island is Tizia. Um, he he tells you that uh, Although there are no Sakurans on this settlement, that that your people will be welcomed here, um, and that he will he will introduce you to uh, their their mayor, and he will he will make sure that you are able to find somewhere to stay, and and hopefully some kind of work to to earn your keep and and be able to help you guys. Mm -hmm. He introduces himself um, also, and again, he's he doesn't speak Sakurin, so he's only speaking in Nicene, and it sounds kind of like his Nicene even is a little challenged, kind of like Captain Fu, like it's not his native tongue, but he introduces himself as Noop Cien, and um, he, you know, he like I said, he's, you know, he's a middle-aged man, uh, Iraqi man, um, strong build, brown hair, beard. He's the captain. Yeah. Well, he's the, he's the fisherman captain, basically who you yeah. first met up with, who, who basically made this <laughs> rescue flotilla happen. Um, when you guys arrive at the docks, you see, other dock workers kind of come up, they grab the ropes, they tie the boats up, and um, the, the fishermen start helping you and all the rest of your crew off of the three boats. And you guys get onto these wooden docks. And uh, the, the most prominent smell is the smell of fish because there's, as you see, like walking up the wooden docks towards the shoreline, you see there's like a, a huge tent and there's like a fish market. Um, and, and most of the dealings have been done for the day, but they're kind of people cleaning up. Um, and you notice that there's the, the way that this port city works is there's uh, a river that comes from, from the island and meets the sea. And like the docks are kind of build, built around that, that water entrance. And you see that there's, you know, there's there's several bridges that connect two parts of this this town that kind of straddle this river along the the coast um so you guys you guys are on land in an actual town and you see and hear people like working you see you know children kind of running around on the streets um you you hear the sounds of languages being spoken um, and you pick up some words in Nicene, but most of it sounds like it's not 
Nicene. It sounds like their own native language. Um, but Noop Cien leads you guys, uh, your group, and, and he beckons to Captain Fu to follow. Um, and he takes you to a two-story building. And the, the construction of all of the buildings is very different from what you are used to. It is not the elegant architecture and artistic style of the Sakurian building. These are very functional buildings. Like they're very square. Um, they all have this stone foundation and then wooden timbers and slats that kind of, you know, build out a very basic square sort of frame. And this is a two story building, which is, uh, most of them are kind of one story looking cottages, but this is a two story building and it has an overhang like that's about 15 feet deep, um, kind of a front porch overhang. And there are people uh, on sitting around tables and chairs, having drinks and eating food outside in this kind of front porch overhang. And you even hear the sound of music coming from inside. Although it's very strange. It doesn't sound in any way like Sakurin music, the, the finesse and the, the, um, the kind of, even the, the, the melody and the key of the music is very different. Um, but you hear this and, and your mother whispers to you and she says, what a, what a strange place. These people seem to be very, very happy and very active. And she says, it's good to be around people again. Uh, and, and she, she, she gestures to, um, one of the women and, and she says, look at her hair, how light it is. It's, it's like her hair is made of gold and, and she's just kind of enamored with this. And you see this, this Iraqi woman with uh, kind of like dirty blonde hair. And it sort of has some <clears throat> pearls and locks as it cascades down. Um, and she's wearing like a white blouse and uh, like very basic kind of like brown um, dress over the white blouse. And she's kind of moving back and forth around the tables with pitchers and platters. And she's speaking very quickly and kind of barking off orders, which you guys is, are, are, you've never seen something quite like this, like just very, everything's very informal and people are laughing and he, you notice people are drinking and like spilling drinks down their shirt and stuff. Like it, it, it's, it's a very festive environment and yet very informal, very casual. Like kind of town. Yeah, it's All very, right. it's, it's, it strikes itself as very odd to you um, and very different. But yeah, Shao Zen, you, you're, you're excited. You don't know what they're drinking, but it looks like they have a lot of different things to drink. Um, and Noop Sien walks over to... Is there any the tables woman. open? Uh, yeah, well, so, so he, he holds up a finger to Captain Fu and says to wait. And he walks over to this woman and he, he speaks to her. And you see she kind of like turns from what she's doing and she looks at, at you guys and she says something to him and points off in the side direction. Um, and you notice, by the way, that you guys are all getting curious looks yeah, from the look. people. <laughs> like like they, they're looking at you guys because they've never seen anyone who looks like you. Um, and and at, at one point... You're, you know, you see uh, a, a few of the men kind of like looking curiously at your mom, and and they, like they whisper back and forth, and um, and then you notice like some of the other men like looking at you guys, and and you, you see um, they're they're kind of speaking in their own language, and it's it's not like you know aggressive or or it seems more like a curiosity as if. These, these types of people have never seen your type of people before. Um, and and so she points to, uh, the, the woman points to kind of the side and uh, Noop Sien nods and, and you see he holds up his hand like this and she clasps his hand and, and they do one of these. Um, and so he comes back and he explains through Captain Fu that um, she has agreed 
to allow you to stay in these rooms in this building next to her inn. And he leads you over there and you kind of walk around this yard area and you see this strange uh, wooden building. And as you pass by this, it's a very small wooden building. It's about six feet tall and it's just like a square, like a five by five square. And as you pass by it on your way to a much larger building, it, it reeks of feces and urine and you're, you're like, oh, and it just, it smells. Um, and you walk by this and you walk through this yard about another 30 feet to a building that looks uh, like a long wooden building. And um, Nupsian opens the doors and inside of it, it, it looks um, like, a, like a stable, like where you would keep horses. There are no horses inside, but there are like stalls, like wooden stalls where it looks like you would keep horses. Um, and, and Nupsian walks in and he, he kind of beckons you in and he opens one of the stall doors and you see in each of the stalls, there is a very basic bunk bed with like a bedroll. And he explains to Captain Fu that there should be enough beds, uh, and bunks for, for all of you. Um, and that you can go ahead and kind of unpack here and that the woman who owns the inn will bring out food for you um, shortly. And he tells you that the woman's name is Tumisot. And Tumisot is the, the owner. She is the owner of the inn. Can, can I ask what the name of the inn is? He explains that the name of the inn um, to you uh, is, is a name in the Iraqi language, which mm -hmm. means um, the ever watching sun. And the lady's name in is again? Her name is Tumisot. Um, Nupsian tells you that you will be safe here. You will be taken care of, uh, that he must go to his family and that tomorrow morning he will find the mayor and he will introduce you to the mayor and um, try to find you uh, some help, a place to live and, you know, some work. He says, start. he says to Captain Fu and through, through Captain Fu's translation, he says um, that it would be wise for you not to leave this area until he returns tomorrow. He says the people here have not seen this occurrence before. They may be concerned or fearful, but he said, you will be safe here. He says, uh, to me, so it has given me her word that she will um, care for you until he returns. Okay. Shall we go exploring boys? I, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of head over to Captain Fu before uh, we do our escapades. And do you think that we're going to remain on this island for very long? Captain Fu says, uh, it is hard to say. Based on the size of their small harbor and their longest of their piers, I am not certain that large ships come to this island very often, but I am hoping that when we are able to make the acquaintance of this mayor, that we may discover uh, and utilize any resources he has to find out where we are amidst the islands of Nicaea. I must admit, I am not familiar with this island, this Tizia is not known to me. Uh, perhaps my navigator Min Zhu would have known of it, but it is not an island that I know of to be involved in commerce or <clears throat> development. So it must be one of the smaller islands. At least it was welcoming to us. Yes, I mean, it's a good stopping point 
but I think the priority we need to all focus on is how do we commandeer, yes. commandeer a ship in a, in a direction or heading to where we need to go. So I think that if we stay here too long, I think there's going to be a lot more of us willing to stay here and, and, and intermingle and perhaps root down like the others have done on the other island. And I think that we're going to be losing the amount of people that we need to successfully get to our end destination. And I think uh, because we don't have any funds, right? I mean, there's nothing on our person that is of a value. Um, maybe some of the things that we found on the island might be used for a barter. Um, but then again, I mean, what do we what do we do? Well, it is it is certain that uh, identifying where we are and where this island is uh, amongst the islands of Nicaea will will help us to at least begin um, to have an understanding of how to then get to somewhere that that would be more opportune and eventually as was originally planned to bring you and your family to the island of Amron where your father's holdings are Agreed. this this will be the way but we must find where this place is first and and from there, how one could make the journey to Amron. I'm sure we'll find out tomorrow better our position a lot better. We should also mingle with the locals. And if we can speak to any of them, maybe we can assess where we are. Yes. It does not seem to me that, uh, that this island uh, has much trade with any of the larger islands. If so, there would certainly be more of a diverse population. The Indeed. fact that they have never seen Sakurans uh, perhaps means that they are isolated amongst the islands in the chain. Perhaps. <clears throat> but we are fortunate that the Iraqi have taken us in they, in my experience, tend to be uh, good folk, though different from our culture, as is obvious. Um, they seem to be fair. So that first, basically, night, because by the time you guys disembarked and walked through town and got, you know, situated at the inn, um, it's, you know, you, you've kind of worked up an appetite. And um, the woman that was introduced to you as uh, Tumisot, she comes into the barn where you guys are staying with like three other uh, servants, basically. And they're carrying baskets of food and pitchers of, of water and mugs and plates. And um, she kind of sets them down on this central this huge rectangular wooden table that looks like maybe it was a workbench at some point, um, but there are stools all around this table. So she brings those things in and she gestures for you guys to come over. Um, and she, you, you, you get the sense that she's curious about you um, and she starts rattling off like words to you um, that are clearly not in Nicene. They seem to be in Iraqi. But she's gesturing to the food and she's pointing to you guys and then she's like pantomiming to eat. And you look at the food and it's, it is, again, very different. You recognize some fish, which looks like smoked fish. Um, but you, you, you kind of smell that the food is seasoned differently. Um, you, you sense that like there's, there are some fruits and vegetables um, you actually recognize some of the berries, some of the fruits in one of the, the bowls as uh, the same type of berries that were native on the island where you guys had been. So she gestures to the food 
Uh, most of the sailors kind of pick at it and taste it. And, and some of them look to you and they're like, oh, it is good. Uh, and they, you know, some of the other ones eat it and they're like, ah, what, what is this flavor? It burns my tongue. And they like set it down. <laughs> so the, the woman nods and then she points to the pitchers and, and, and uh, you notice that there's no wine or no ale among, amongst the, the, the drinks. Um, so you guys have, have food, the, your crew has food, your mother, um, has food. And, um, she, at a certain point, the woman, uh, goes over to Zhao Chen and, and she, she pantomimes like, um, her stomach and, and you see they're having some difficulty communicating. So she, she goes over to the youngest amongst you. She goes over to Cho and she, she beckons for you to follow. And she walks out the yard over to that stinky wooden hut. And she, she points down at her stomach and she points to you. And then she points at the hut and, and then she opens the door and you see inside the door is like a strange chair with a hole in it. And the smell is even stronger. And she, she points to you and then she, she kind of points to her stomach and then she points to this hut. Okay. Do you need to use the restroom? child <laughs> and she do you need she, me to help you she just shrugs and, and she walks away so um <laughs> o- over the course of the next couple hours several of the sailors have some digestive issues after having eaten the food uh, <laughs> not that the food was bad or poisonous but it just has a different way of hitting their stomachs right. and you see several of them like ask around uh they're like is there a trench what do we do uh, i i and they they like look around outside and over here if you what? must relieve yourself i have found a an area well what is it and they walk it, over there with you it appears and smells to be some form of a uh suppository for your feces and you see one of them like open the door and it, he looks in and he's like, oh, he's like, what, what is this? And he, he goes in, you see, he like looks and he, he says, I'm supposed to go in there. Yes. Just <laughs> pull <laughs> some cloth around your nose. I would rather be safe. He's like, I, I would rather dig a pit and, and shit over in that field. And I fear that that door. would be disrespectful to this community. Oh, they have offered this to us. This is barbaric. And and he, he <laughs> see he goes in, the door closes, you hear him relieving himself. And, he, <laughs> and, and you hear him say, Where is the water? Where is the water to wash my ass? They keep no water here. <laughs> I have not used the facility, and why am I still here talking to you? This is barbaric. <laughs> and and so like basically that's how the night the first night goes. Um, the next morning, all of you all of you slept. I'm not gonna say say well, because you you effectively slept on like wood pallets in a barn. It didn't get cold at night. It dropped down a little bit, but your your bed rolls and blankets, as thin as they are, were were more than sufficient. Um. But in the morning you are awoken um, and it seems pretty early too. And uh, Noop Sien, you hear a, a knock on the, the doors outside and then the door opens and Noop Sien comes in and um, he speaks to Captain Fu and explains that um, the mayor will meet with uh, you about your situation. And that he will come back to get you. Um, He says that to to stay here and that he has arranged for breakfast for you. So um, again, you know, about an hour later, Tumisot and a few of her workers comes and they, you know, they lay out this food and there's a lot of fruit. 
um, and you see there are eggs. Um, and the, the, the eggs look like they have been cooked and stirred up and there are some, some green spices on them. Um, and again, like, you know, the crew like smells it and, and some of them try eating and you try some of the different food and everybody kind of eats. And another hour after that, um, kind of in the late morning, Noop Sien returns and, and he tells Captain Fu that um, he will take you guys and Captain Fu to meet the mayor, but the rest of the people and your mother should stay here. Agreed. So um, Noop Sien leads you guys through the town. And as you pass through the town, you know, in this morning, you see people, you know, all, all out in the streets. You pass by this area where it looks like people are trading. Um, it looks like there's there are some farmers who have carts with food that they're selling food off the back of the carts. Uh, you see like you pass by this, this small building and you hear the clucking of chickens, just dozens of chickens in this, <laughs> in this building, like in, and there's a yard around the building where the chickens are and, and you see, you know, people selling eggs. Um, and there it's, there, you also pass by a, a building where you literally feel the gust of heat as you see two boys kind of pumping this fire and you see a really strongly well-built man like banging on iron and smashing out iron. And, and, you know, you could tell that he's a blacksmith of some kind. And you kind of get to this other part of town where it, there's less commerce and more just like cottages and, and buildings. And all of them have this very similar build where it's just a square building, very plain building. Um, and the last house that you get to that kind of has like bushes and trees on the property that give it some shade um, is a larger two-story building. And it looks like it's made, the first floor is like made entirely of stone. And then the second floor has that wooden timber look and this roof. Um, and it looks like it's maybe, you know, bigger, uh, not just bigger, but like more well-constructed. Um, yeah. And there's, you see that there is a, a strong, well-built man wearing leather armor. He's an Iraqi man. And you see he has um, a sword and a shield slung over his shoulder. And he stands outside of this building. Um, as Noop Sien approaches, he tells Captain Fu, who then relays to you guys, that this is the home of the mayor. Um, and that that guard right there uh, will want to make sure that you guys are not armed. So as you approach, you walk up the, the flagstone path and you get to the front of the house, the guard stops and he says something in Iraqi to Nupsian and Nupsian nods and puts his hands in the air, lifts his arms up. And you see the man with the sword, like feeling him, like touching his body and feeling around him. And then he passes him through. Um, and then Captain Fu does the same thing and he feels are any of you carrying your weapons? I just have my staff have number, so. and my shields. Okay. So when he gets to you, uh, he points to your staff and shield and he, he points to like this area on the side where there's some rocks. And he takes his shield off and he sets it down there. And then he points to you and points to that area. And what, set my things I think, brother, he wants you to disarm. I I got the gist. Yeah, I so my things down. when you do, he nods. Um, he gets to Cho. Cho, are you wearing any weapons? I'm not wearing any weapons. Okay, so he feels you. He feels Shao Zen, and, and then he, he nods. And you see he pulls a key out, and he opens the, unlocks the door and opens it. <clears throat> And you, he, he walks in and you see a little rope next to the door and he, he pulls the rope and you hear a bell somewhere else in the house. Um, and you guys are standing in a entrance foyer. Uh, and there's, uh, there, there's, you know, what looks like a 10 by 10 entrance foyer with a single desk 
um, and then a door, just one door past that desk. Um, and it's, it's not lit other than the, the window that is above the door. There's no additional lighting in this room. Um, and you, you wait in this entrance foyer and a moment later you hear the door behind that desk open up and you see a man approach you. Um, he has black curly hair, kind of medium length. And he has like a mustache and a pointed beard that seems very well manicured. And he's dressed um, in, in what looks like a very fine material. Um, it looks like a soft kind of green um, shirt. And he has like a leather belt and leather boots. And the, uh, again, soft kind of brown pants. It's some kind of um, soft animal skin is what it looks like to you. And this man comes out and he, he speaks in uh, Iraqi to Noop Sien. And Noop Sien nods and bows. And then he replies in Iraqi and gestures to you guys. And then the man um, turns to you guys and in Sakurin, although with an accent, he replies in Sakurin to you. And he says, uh, welcome to our island Tizia. You are from Sakura. It is pleasure. Have you come to our island? I am a uh, man who is watch over this town is called Nizus, my name. What is your name? Uh, Nupsien, he say, you, this man, Captain. And he points to Captain Fu. And Captain Fu says, um, I am uh, Fu, Captain Fu, yes. And he nods. Um, and the mayor who has introduced himself as Nizus, he looks to the three of you and he <clears> says, uh, how you have come to this island Tizia? I look to my older brother, Shao, because I believe as the eldest he should explain. Well, I, I bow and I, uh, I introduce myself. I am Shao Zen. Shao Zen. Yes. As you welcome, come my home, we sit for speaking. And he, he invites you in and past the doorway is a hall that has several doors on both sides. And you notice that this hallway is also has some light coming from windows on the sides. Um, he leads you to a room that looks kind of like a comfortable living room or parlor. There are, you know, some, some nice um, chairs. Most of the furniture though is very functional and basic. It's like sturdy wooden furniture with just like a blanket on it. So it's not like upholstered or carved or decorated in any fashion. Um, but he gestures for you guys to sit down. And in the course of, you know, meeting you, um, essentially he explains that Noopsian has explained that they, they found you guys um, on the island to the Southwest of Tizia, um, but that he, he, he is not sure how you came to be there. Um, you explain about the shipwreck. I'm not sure how much of the detail you're going to explain about that, but you know, he, he acknowledges that you were shipwrecked and that you found yourself on that Island. Um, and this, by the way, I just summarized like 
what probably would have taken like a half an hour of you guys explaining to him in, you know, through the language barrier of his limited Sakurin and the little bit of Nicene that you guys, that Captain Fu can speak. Um, so you're there for, for a while. And then he, he, at a certain point, he rings another one of those bells that are on a rope and a servant comes in with a platter and lays down this platter. And you see an assortment of, um, like small dainty food bits. Um, and you see this, that, that, uh, he also comes in with a bottle and these goblets. They're all made out of, of the, the goblets are made out of wood, but, um, he pours out the bottle and in, into all the goblets and hands it to you all. And it smells, it has like a nice kind of floral bouquet. And, and he, he holds up the goblet and he raises a toast and he says, uh, to your joining us here on Tizia. And he drinks. It, it tastes like wine, but it has um, kind of a different smell to it. It's, it's, it's got like a floral kind of smell. Um, so you guys, you guys are there talking with him for a while. He explains to you that they do not have large ships that come to this island. Um, their harbor is not deep enough for large ships, but that uh, there have been sailing vessels and trade vessels that have stopped on their island occasionally. Um, that his island is for the most part, uh, Tizia for the most part is really just focused on this town and that the, the majority of the island is wild. Um, he says there's, you know, that they have uh, farmland that extends for miles around the town, but that the, the majority of the rest of the island is wild. And that they have only had a uh, settlement here like for the last 20 years. Uh, can I ask where through Captain Fu or, or whoever, like where we are in relation to where we're trying to get to Emron? If Ooh. he knows. So, yeah. So uh, Nizus tells you that he's he is uh, not aware of like every island in the entire chain. He says there are many, many islands in Nicaea. Um, but he, he tells you that the islands that um, are kind of closest to, that are, that are large, that are kind of closest to um, where you guys are, that uh, there's some smaller islands and some larger islands. He says that mm -hmm. the, the closest large island um, is Kuap Vogam. And he says, mm -hmm. uh, you, he says, you do not wish to go there. Oh. He says it is a very dangerous place. Inhabited? He said, yes, uh, there are several cities there, but like also, uh, also many ships and, um, soldiers. Pirates? He, said, he, he says, you, uh, he says, he, he explains to you that on Kuap Vogam, that there are other Sakurans. He says, but they are not good Sakurans like you. He says they they Ooh. steal and kill. Pirates. Yeah. Hmm. It will be one step closer it's, to our goal. He yeah. says Cap Cap Vogam yeah. is very large island, but very dangerous place. <clears throat> I ask Captain God. I ask through Captain Fu to yeah. ask 
to ask him, how do you defend yourselves here? Um, Nisus explains that that they um, they do not venture too far out from the town or from the, the adjacent farmland. He says that, as he mentioned before, the, the majority of the rest of Tizia is wild and can be dangerous. He says uh, there are mountains, which are, he says the, the Titsi mountains are um, very fruitful for fresh water. Uh, but there are dangerous creatures that live amongst those mountains. He says, uh, the lake feeds us our fresh water, uh, Lake Tizia in the center of the island. He says, uh, but there is also great dangers. He says, uh, we have a place, perhaps you saw it. And, and you see he, he rattles off something in Iraqi to Nupsian and Nupsian nods. Um, and then Nisus looks back at you and he says, uh, when Nupsian uh, bring you to Titsi, you see uh, big woods, big woods. Yes. yes. He says he's south of our island. Uh, we call this uh, woods, how you make, he says, Um, whistling woods of some sort yes like this um he says his place where he's um uh spirits spirits mm. Mm, not happy not happy spirits mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is other areas of Tizia is dangerous creatures. Can you describe the creatures? Uh, yeah. Mountains uh, is big creature with hair bigger than man with lots of hair. Hair, you know hair, is like this. Uh, Does that sound like anything I've seen? No. Okay. Um, he says, uh, west uh, side of island is also uh, dangerous between lake and coast uh, the ground is wet you know this ground is wet and forest uh, this is where uh, and he looks over at at Nupsian and says something again in Iraqi and Nupsian you notice that Nupsian seems kind of like concerned about this and he shakes his head he doesn't say anything he just shakes his head And Nisa says, uh, you, you staying on island southwest of Tizia, how long after shipwreck? How long? Days? Several. Months. Several. I don't remember the exact number, but I would say how many, you know. Yeah. So you guys were there for weeks. For weeks, um, yeah. And, and he says, uh, after you kind of explain this, Nisa says um you know of the, the fishmen yes the fishmen with head y yes uh, they are he says um, before araki come Nicaea, 
before Sakurin, come Nicaea. Uh, before all men come Nicaea is these men, the fish men, is Nicaea. I wonder if that's what the men were looking for yeah. out the side of the boat. Cade's fist just tightens a little bit. Captain Fu, Captain Fu mentions this to Noopsian and, and Noopsian nods. We have encountered them on mm -hmm. more than one occasion and have done well for ourselves. Would not want to see a a whole colony of them at once. Nisus says, uh, we stay here. Uh, don't go anymore to other parts of island. And the fishmen don't bother us. But on other parts of island, if we go, uh, the fishmen not like it. No. Uh, Nupsien, he go fishing on that side of island. He see you, but is also dangerous because of the fishmen. Well, we are grateful that he saw us. You know what their name? No. In Iraqi, we call them Karsh. Karsh. They are the, the Karsh. How many? Before man come to Nicaea? Many. Many, many cars, like fish in the sea. Uh, not, not as many now, with more men come. How many here? Just mm -hmm. five. Don't know, because we don't go outside of Tidzi. They don't bother us. He says, uh, you, you have men, sailors. They can work uh, fishing boats. We find them work, uh, pay them food and money. Yes? Yes. You have woman is mother? Yes. She, yes. she can work. Yes? No. She, she can work farm? No. <laughs> she can work, make clothes. Why do we know we ask, if she has any? Skills? Let's ask mother if she wants, let's ask yeah, mother yeah. if she wants to do anything because she does not have to work if she does not want to. Yeah, we will work for her, provide for our own mother. He, he looks at Nupsian and he says something and Nupsian responds. And then in, in Nicaean, um, Nisus speaks to Captain Fu. And Captain Fu nods and he translates to you guys and he says, they think it is strange that she would not work. Uh, he says that in their culture, the Iraqi, everyone works. He says, only the old do not work. Well, can I say one thing to Captain Fu and have him relate it back to the yes. mayor? Is that from where we come from, their stature or status, and we value this in our culture. Uh, we understand your hospitality and the need to, um, for us to 
get involved and 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 um, provide for ourselves here. And we appreciate you offering work, but she does not work um, because of our, her status. We will do what it needs to be done to provide for ourselves and for her. But the bigger thing is what I relate to Captain Fu is to get a nautical map of whatever they know so we can make uh, the arrangements that we need to do and how long will it take for us to actually be on this island? So Captain Fu begins kind of, uh, you know, explaining this and, and then it's kind of a mixture of him speaking in Nicene and then uh, the mayor speaking back in Nicene, but also in some Sakurin. And the gist that you get is that um, the, the mayor understands he, he understands what you explained as your family being nobles. Um, and, and he, he explains to you that, um, if your family can share some of your wealth, that he will do everything in his power to help you to find where it is that you must go. Um, and that, even includes um, the use of his sailing ship, which is not a big ship at all, but a little bit bigger than the fishing boats. And it is capable of making it to an adjacent island. He tells you that it's not quite uh, big enough to make it through the deep ocean, but that he is confident that it could be big enough to make it to uh, an adjacent island and from there perhaps to uh, another island. He explains this to you. I have a question or, or two. How long would it take to actually build since you have built boat builders here to make a large ship? He, he says that they don't have... And is that even possible? Yeah, he says they can make smaller boats, but they don't have the means to make large ships. He says you would have to go to one of the large port cities um, where they have the ability to do that. Um, and he says the, as he said before to you, the, the, the danger is that if you were to go to one of the larger port cities, um, it could be, it could be dangerous for you and your family. Uh, the, he says that the people there, even the Sakurans, don't respect authority or nobility or family or anything like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and chime in a little bit with, with something. Um, and I speak to Captain Fu first and Sakurin. I know they can understand it, but uh, Captain, perhaps... The three of us, my, myself and brothers, could offer our services to as warriors uh, and take care of something for them, perhaps. Uh, maybe, maybe we could clear collect, clear out the uh, karsh, or maybe some other part of the island for them for the use of a vessel. And I will. No, I'll let him tell that first. So, 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 you know, Captain Fu nods, but before kind of translating and he's, he's speaking very rapidly in Sakurin. So it's, so that your discussion can't be followed exactly. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. But he, he kind of tells you in, in a hushed voice, he, he's like, uh, I understand what it is that you are trying to suggest my Lord. Uh, I am only concerned perhaps though, that uh, it could be, more dangerous than the meager encounter uh he says if if the presence of the these creatures these karsh uh, were enough to drive this town of uh, several hundred people uh, away from the other parts of the island then perhaps it would be too dangerous for us to to try and uh, navigate or negotiate therein well, maybe not the cars itself, maybe another part of the island we need help with. Ah, true, true. Uh, yes, per perhaps you are right. Uh, 
perhaps indeed. Um, there is the matter of that that place that he mentioned. Uh, the whistling woods of some sort. Woods. I, I wonder if there is any value uh, in either those mountains or those woods right. such that the, the, the wealth of his standing could be established. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Or we should see about that. Yes. Please explain. He, um, he begins to kind of discuss this uh, and, and over the course of yet another, you know, half an hour or so, he's kind of discussing this with them. Um, and the mayor tells you guys that before the Karsh attacks, like, and this is like 15 years ago, right? Like when the first settlement was built here at the, the harbor, um, that there were explorers who went up into the mountains and they were kind of doing exploration um, and surveying to see if there was any valuable ores in the mountains. And he says that they actually found silver, um, but that when they started doing the mining operations, they were attacked and their, their mining camp was like basically just destroyed. He says, he says, no, not, not by the Karsh, by the, the hairy beasts. Uh, um, but he says that, you know, that could be, you know, that could be a, a, a place that could be fruitful if, you know, you were willing to, to take the risk. Mm -hmm. He says, but no one has tried going to the, to that mining camp in at least 10 years. So he, he kind of describes that he basically just doesn't know at this yeah. point, even, you know, what the, you know, situation is. Even be there. Yeah. yeah. But he says that at one time there were, you know, there were active expeditions and, and forays into mining there. Hmm. Um, the mayor tells you that there's a, an island with another settlement about 50 miles to the north. Um, and that island is then, would bring you much closer to another island that's even further north of that. Mm -hmm. um, but that has like a, a pretty decent port and a pretty, pretty decent sized city. That's not full of bad people. Right. So he tells you that, you know, the, the island that's closest to them that's inhabited um, to the north is called Sencha. And Sencha is, you know, is, is actually smaller than Tizia in terms of its population. But it's, you know, it's a, a stopping point on the way to a larger island. And the larger island is called Halri. So is it safe to assume that no trade routes have been set up through these islands yet? He says, well, there, there have been trade routes set up, but he's, you know, he, he says that that's how he knows where Halri is and that, you know, how he knows where Sencha is, is because those are, you know, trade routes to the north of them. And, um, but he says, you know, the, the stretch between Tizia and Sencha is, you know, that's, that's the closest, the closest inhabited island is 50 miles away. And Hallery then is about a hundred miles or a little bit more from yeah. Tizia. Okay. Yeah. And so Hallery, Hallery, he, he tells you that Hallery is only about 30 miles away from Sencha. Okay. So he says, now, on the other hand, to the west is Kuap Vogam, the place that he told you about before. He said that's 80 miles to the west. He says that basically to the west and to the northwest are the larger islands uh, with larger, more established 
settlements, cities, governments, all that stuff. But he also tells you that there are great dangers, not just the residents of those islands, like in the case of Kuat Vogam, but he tells you that there are places around Nicaea that should be avoided because they are dangerous. There are creatures that are dangerous. <clears throat> um, he says that some of the places have ancient old magics that protect them. Have I, in my endeavors, heard of Kuat Vogam? No. Okay. Well, well, I look to my brothers. Well, we have some good information. What do you think? I think we should see if there's any way we can provide a value to these people for their hospitality before we move on and discover new locations. Of course. I think I think definitely that's a that's a that's a plan. I think we need Understood. to establish some kind of currency. And yeah. uh, if if the loot that we found on the other island doesn't bring a value to these people, then perhaps the silver mining. I think is our first step in securing some kind of uh, is, a, a currency for ourselves yeah. and also help uh, and establish that uh, we are um, here for their best interest as well and that we won't bring them any harm by taking uh, uh, too many risks uh, for their population here. So, and I think that moving on is definitely a priority, but I think definitely we can not establish enough currency to buy ourselves uh, anything moving forward. So yeah. how long this is going to take, I don't know. We don't have the manpower since a lot of the guys still stay behind. But I think that now that they have established themselves there uh, and we know exactly what's going on here, we might be able to go back and forth uh, and offer that information to them and maybe perhaps get them to come here or maybe work in conjunction and support this island through them and create a commerce thing with them. So uh, it, it's, Agreed. there's all these valuable uh, assets that we can use, but I think the silver mining thing is spot on. Yeah. I think that's an initial thing we can do quickly to establish also and get mining. discovered the secret of the, uh, of the evil spirit woods, because it might just be a jest to keep people away. Possible. So well, after, after a couple hours uh, with the mayor and discussions about all this stuff, um, the mayor tells you that he will uh, work with, that, that he will basically work with some of the local businesses and some of the local fishermen to find work for you and all of your people with the exception of your mother. And he says that, you know, once you have been working and your people have been working for a couple of weeks, you should be able to afford uh, some of the cottages to rent some of the cottages that are, in, you know, that are in the town. He says, mm -hmm. uh, you are more than welcome if you feel competent to, to build your own camp or even your own cabins. Uh, on the outskirts of town, he says, but I would not go much further out than the farms because strange things can happen at night if you are more than, you know, a mile away from, from the town. He right. says that he would also be very interested if you were willing to try to, you know, foray into the, the area where the mining camps were and see if you could recover anything from those mining camps that, you know, he and, and the rest of, of the residents and citizens of Titsi would collaborate and support you with that, that, you know, if you were responsible for somehow clearing out that area and making the mines viable again, and, you know, he could provide you with laborers who would be more than interested in working in the silver mines. Um, and that, you know, that could be profitable for you and your family, as well as for the town of Titsia or for Titsi. And, and even what Shao Zen said, conceivably mm -hmm. um, establishing kind of some kind of regular 
you know, boat link between so the uninhabited island. island where you guys were and yeah. Tizia. Uh, I have a very important question for Cap- Captain Fu. Uh, and I speak it to where hopefully we can just talk quickly. Uh, I ask him, how do these Iraqi feel about people like me, as you know, but I am? He says, uh, I, I am not certain. They, they do have their own gods. Uh, it would follow then that perhaps they would consider this a holy man sort of thing. He's like, would you like me to politely ask about such things? Please, Captain. I don't want to offend these people by doing something uncreative. So he begins, Captain Fu begins kind of speaking with um, the mayor um, and and with Nupsien. And as they are talking, um, they reveal that the Iraqi people have a whole pantheon of gods that they worship. Um, and that there are there are priests who draw power from those gods but that there are also uh, those who are invested with the power of the gods through other means and you get the sense that they maybe have both clerics and druids who are considered holy people right and that um, this is not a taboo in their culture that it is something that is revered and as they explain this to you um, you see Noop Sien actually speak in Iraqi to the mayor, to Nisus. And Nisus nods. And Noop Sien explains to you through Captain Fu that he could introduce you to that, that they have a priest, that they have a priest of the water god in the town of Titsi. Mm-hmm. And if, someone, yep. if he wanted to, you know, introduce you, he would introduce you. I would like that at some point. Probably okay. Tomorrow. So as you guys kind of make these arrangements, Nisus tells you, you know, re- return to the inn of the sun and that uh, Tumisot will, will keep you housed and fed there until your people have earned enough to, to have their own lodging and, purchase their own finery and what whatnot, but um, that you you can stay there um, and that she will make sure that you are fed and, and have a place to stay um, and that Nisus will send uh, people to hire your your people as workers uh, that there's there's labor to be had you know for working for farmers uh, but also for you know some of the fishermen so, he will see to it that you you can begin to have work. And he he tells you that after your people are situated and they have some work, then he will have one of his men who kind of knows the land take you to the mountains if you are still interested mm-hmm. in doing this survey of, of uh, the old mining camps. So he okay. stands, he nods to all of you. Uh, Captain Fu bows uh, and, and you see... When Captain Fu bows, um, you, you see the mayor kind of look at at Noob Cien and then he he kind of does an awkward bow as if bowing is not a part of their <laughs> their culture. <laughs> and you notice that uh, that that the mayor holds his hand up like this, and and he he shows you guys and in Sakura and he says, "Our people do this to clasp the hand means." that you are friends, you have uh, an accord. And he holds his hand up to Captain Fu and Captain Fu kind of like awkwardly puts his hand up and, and they clasp hands and, and, and the mayor smiles and he says, yes, yes, this is very good. Welcome to Titsi. Uh, I will see you soon. And then you are escorted out of the mayor's uh, home and um, as you guys are walking back through the town again, you know, you notice it's, it's not a huge city. Uh, there, there are a few hundred people out and about on the streets, but 
it is the most populated thing that you've seen since you left Sakura. And there's something comforting about seeing kind of um, normal life as, as you have not seen it with, with old people and young people and, and working people and children um, and, and the smells of food and, and the sounds of people working and living their lives. Um, and the town is, is active and it's alive. Um, and you guys are led back to uh, the inn of the ever watching sun. And um, just as you are led back, uh, you guys get back there and your mother's eager to hear the news and Captain Fu and you guys kind of explain to all the sailors and, and to your mother, the arrangements that you have made. And uh, there's a general, you know, contentment. Everybody seems eager to kind of have some kind of life. Um, you notice that after, after you guys kind of summarize everything, some of the sailors ask Captain Fu if he thinks that they'll be able to, to get a ship um, and, and to get work back on the sea again. And Captain Fu says that it's, it's possible, but based on what he's been told, it's going to take a while to, to earn the means just to, to even get off of this island and then to get to a much larger island um, where perhaps there are some Sakuran companies who, who have ships and who have um, the means to hire a crew. So Captain Fu kind of reassures them, but you guys notice after he talks to them that there, there's a little bit of doubt in his mind as to, as to whether or not that will happen and, and it remains to be seen. And as you contemplate this, and you get some much needed rest, we will end this episode of High Adventure. Tune in next time to find out what the brothers will begin to uncover on this new island and in this new culture on the island of Tizia. Thanks as always for watching, for your support, for liking and subscribing, and we will see you on the next episode. Peace out. It's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.